I'd like you to show what happens on an OM603 turbo diesel when you have multiple bad glow plugs. My 91350 SDL. Notice when you turn the key to pre-glow, the light does not come on. And then when you actually go to start, Got a nice cloud of smoke. And it smooths it out once the motor warms up. And then in a couple of seconds, you'll see that the glow plug light itself will come on, and that that will happen when it stops doing the pre-glow. right there. So let's figure out what the problem is exactly and fix it. So since the motor starts and runs on some cylinders, we know that some of the plugs are working, which means that the relay is getting power. On older cars, there's an 80 amp strip fuse right here. Uh, my, not, my late car has a circuit breaker. So what has most likely happened is we have one or more glow plugs that have failed. The glow plugs on the 603, if we look down in here, you can see one of the, the connections right there above the coolant temperature sensor I pointed out. That is one of the glow plug fittings. So we want to test them. You could use a multimeter and measure the resistance through each of them, but I find that slightly tedious. Instead, I'm going to use one of my favorite diagnostic tools, a simple test light. This has a uh, like a two watt lamp in it. And you can see when I touch it to something grounded, it lights up. I've got it clipped to a fuse that has constant power. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff in the way of the glow plugs, but because of how Mercedes wired these, each plug has an individual wire that comes back to this plug socket. So let me get that off of there, and then we can test each plug from here. Okay, that's disconnected. Now I can take the test light and simply touch it to each connection. Look at that one. No connection. No ground. No ground. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. So what that means is the wires that go back to these two, either there's a fault in the wiring between this connector and the glow plug, or the glow plug itself is bad. When this connection is hooked into the glow plug relay, it has the effect of connecting everything together. So you can't just touch the glow plug and do that uh, continuity test. But now that that's unhooked, we could go in and, sorry for the wobble vision here, you can see this black plastic piece is a wire organizer for the glow plug harness, and you can see the wire comes out and goes to this uh, nut, which is threaded into the glow plug that goes into the pre-chamber. And if I touch it here, you can see that lights up. So this plug, number five, is most likely good. Let's go to number six. Nothing. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, see, I just faked myself out. I was touching the, the oil 
filter housing. No connection. So number six is bad. Let's try number four. Nothing. So cylinder four and cylinder five, these two, the glow plugs have gone open circuit and that's why it uh, starts so hard. Just like spark plugs, glow plugs come in many different variations. This is uh, the glow plug for a, uh, a direct injection 1.9 liter TDI Volkswagen. You can see it's very long. Since it's direct injection, this comes in from the top and goes all the way down through the head and pokes just just out of the head down into where the piston bowl is. This is the glow plug for an indirect injection 1.6 Volkswagen. No, it has the threaded connection on it whereas the the TDI one is a is a smooth press on. And this is the glow plug that fits this motor. Notice it's, uh, let me get, the, get these aligned more properly. It's a little bit longer. The threads are different. And I think, yeah, these threads look like they're different as well. Um, on these Mercedes, there was a change in the glow plug length when they went to the angled injection with the number 17 cylinder head. The 3.5 liter motors shipped with a number 17 head, but if you have a 3 liter motor, you could have a number 14 head, number 15 head. So the way to tell is two ways. One, if you look at the fuel injectors in this engine, you can see they're kind of, uh, they're, they're tilted this way just a little bit um, but if you didn't have one it didn't know what the straight injection engine looks like maybe you wouldn't notice the difference of course there's going to be a leaf blower in the background so the way to tell what your cylinder head casting number is is you come in and between cylinder two and cylinder three down there See if I can get this to focus. You can see there's some of the part number and then you see where it says 2201. That means that this is a number uh, a number 22 cylinder head. So that's the last revision of the 603 head and it means that we definitely have angled injection which means that the glow plug is actually slightly shorter than the one for the, uh, the straight injection 603 engine. And it also means, annoyingly, that it's about twice the price. Um, I guess depending on where you look, I got these at CarQuest. From, uh, they ordered them from Worldpack and they were about $12 a piece. Here's what they, I would recommend only buying the, the Bosch glow plugs. The uh, NGKs don't seem to get as hot as the Bosch ones. So we know which plugs are bad. We have our replacements. What's our next step? Well, we need to make a decision. I have six new plugs, and I could go through and replace all six. If two have failed, it's likely that more will fail in the future. But I'm also feeling kind of lazy, and in order to get to 
many of the plugs, you have to take the intake off, which isn't too bad. You can see access to the top bolts is pretty good. The bottom bolts aren't that bad. The injector pipes do not have to come off. But since it's two plugs, which you can kind of almost get at, I'm tempted to try and replace these with the intake in place only because it's these two. These two are the easiest ones to get at. So I think I will try that. The first thing I'm going to do is spray some penetrating lubricant on the, uh, the nuts that attach the wires and on the uh, where the plugs screw into the pre-chambers. One other note, we know that those plugs are bad because we use the test light to touch the plug directly. Even though it was open at the wiring to the glow plug relay, touching to the plug itself eliminated. Well, let me say the, the ground fault is not, there could be a fault in the wiring, but it's unlikely. The plugs themselves do seem to be bad. So, Always double check at the plug before you go through the bother of taking it out of the head. Um, that's my recommendation. Okay, first of all, let's try the new one. See that works, gets nice and hot on the end, and uh, nice and hot everywhere. Let's uh, let's try the old one. Okay, here's the old plug. Let's see what happens with it. I heard a spark. Wow, that's interesting. I wonder if this was just dirty in the head or something. That is not the result I expected. You can see down in there is where the glow plug was. The nut is still attached to the wiring harness. And there's the threaded spot where it goes into the head and then pokes into the pre-chamber. Since I've got it out and since I've got a new plug in hand, I'm going to go ahead and put the new plug in, but I think I'll keep that old one as a spare. Okay, here's the plug from number four. And you can see how it's very sooty on the tip, so this one hasn't been running for a while. Let's uh, connect it up and see what it does. Nothing. nothing at all. So that brings up an important point on, uh, on these glow plugs. If one of them goes bad, you really need to replace it soon. If the plug never runs, it will build up soot and carbon on the plug, and it can cause the plug to get stuck in the head. And that is a real bummer. Um, what can happen then is as you, as you continue to unscrew it, the tip part can break off from the body and now you're left with pieces in this case stuck in the pre-chamber or in the case of a TDI it'll fall down and get stuck in the in the piston and it can cause engine damage so don't don't ignore these and just say oh it starts and runs well enough after after a couple seconds it is so much easier to fix this right away than to wait and have an issue. All done. So what I had to do down in here is I took that uh, bushing piece off for the throttle linkage. I disconnected this vertical piece, get that out of the way. I removed that eight millimeter nut to take the ball socket off of this linkage and drop it down and if you look back in there we have two 
shiny new glow plugs. Let's see how they start. So, we'll turn the key and hopefully we get the wait to start light. Hmm. Let me go make sure I have everything plugged in. Okay, that's back together. So it turns out the last three plugs on the 603, really you can do without taking the intake off. It uh, might make things a little easier, but access is pretty good. You will need a wobble, but um, not too bad. So this is that last number, number six plug, and you can see how sooty it is. That's more what I would expect. I also wanted to share a tip with you. If you ever need a short extension and you don't have one, see if you've got some adapters. This is a, uh, geez, I'm always so bad with the, with the names of the drives, but the small drive, the medium drive, and then the medium drive back to the small. What is that, quarter inch? Yeah, yeah, because that's the big one, three eighths. Anyway, let's turn the key and see what we get. Oh, it would probably help if the glow plugs are plugged back in. Off camera, I verified all six connections at the glow plug relay light with the test light. So let's see what happens when we turn the key. Now we get a way to start light. Wait for that to go out. <laughs> nice and smooth on all six. That's the way it should be. I think the light was taking so long to go out because I've got some uh, problems with the temperature sensor wiring. A little corrosion in there. But, I think that is a successful repair. As always, thanks for watching.